All right, check this out. You guys are back on the Hater World and on Blue Devil. What we got going on today is a video of two YSL members finally not ratting on each other. But before we get into this video, if you guys are new to the Hater World, make sure you go over, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, like the video, and most importantly, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you guys like what I'm doing or whether you don't. And salute to all my day ones. You guys already know nothing but love. Uh, but check this out. Today is January 1st. 2023 uh time to move on to doing bigger and better things so uh just stay tuned and keep your eye out for new shit that we got coming uh all this beef and drama we're gonna leave it in the past unless we got to address it you guys already know we don't be ducking nothing so unless we gotta say something then we will but until then leave all that shit in the past uh so check this out we got a. Uh, Two YSL game members that didn't rat and didn't want to get out on their plea bargains. Uh, this video was sent to my Instagram, uh, at the hater world. So if you don't follow me, make sure you do so. Uh, but other than that, let's get you guys a Southsiders reaction. Let's get it. So this lady right here that you see with the microphone, she's about to read all the charges and read the time that they're going to be offering these two guys. All right, their deal. She's going to be reading off the deal. So let's see. Uh, what the deal is. Let's go. Ready, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Your Honor, as it relates to Mr. Tinquarius Mender, Mr. Mender is charged with count one of the indictment, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, which carries a sentence of five to 20 years. He's also charged with count 44 of the indictment, which is possession of a weapon by, by an incarcerated individual, which carries a sentence of one to five years. Count 45, possession of a telecommunication device by an incarcerated individual, which carries a sentence of one to five years. And last, count 46, which is participation in criminal street gang activity, which carries a sentence of five to 20 years. Um, Mr. Mender is an ANC recidivist. The state did file a recidivist notice on December 9th of this year. Um, if Mr. Mender was found guilty of all the counts in the indictment, he'd be looking at a maximum exposure of 50 years to serve in prison. And now, could you explain the difference, I think, for Ms. Ms. I'm sure that Ms. Fagan has probably explained that to his uh, her client, but can you tell Mr., for the benefit of the record and for Mr. Mender's benefit, what potentially may happen if he were to be convicted of any of these particular counts? Like, what would, uh, under A or C? Yes, um, if he's um, convicted of any of the counts, um, as an ANC recidivist, Mr. Mender, you would have to get the maximum amount on mm -hmm. um, for that charge, and then whatever time the court gives you, which if it was to be the maximum, you have to spend every day door to door. He which means you have to spend every day in custody. He had no good time. Damn, you know what that means? That means that he got four charges, right? Four charges. Each charge carries an amount of time, right? So whatever he gets charged for, he has to get the maximum amount of time. Uh, one of them was five to 20 years, right? If he gets charged for that, he can't get five. They're only going to give him 20, which is the max, right? And there's no good time. So that means that he's going to have to do from day one to day 20 years in prison. There's no good time, no early release, no none of this, no bullshit, no 85%, no 80%, no 95%, nothing. It's gonna be day one he walks in, starts counting all the way to 20 years. That's some bullshit. And again, if he gets charged, he's gonna get the maximum time. Uh, they're not gonna be able to give him anything less because you know, uh, certain charges, if you get charged, the judge might give you anywhere, depending on the charge itself, say the charge carries one to five years, right? The judge might say a year and a half. The judge might say two years. You know, in this case, the judge has to sentence you to the max. Uh, that's some scary shit. But let's keep going. It's, it's a to-the-door sentence. Yes, he would get any credit for a time served. Of but, course, yeah, But anything else would be um, a full sentence door-to-door. -door. Um, so his max is 50 years? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and what's the state's offer? Yes, Your Honor. The state's um, offer for Mr. Mender as to count one is 16 years to serve one year, commute to time served, with a balance of 15 years on probation. Um, the state would 
offer that his probation could be terminated upon successful completion of the first 10 years of this sentence, provided that he violated no provisions of the agreement or no special conditions of the agreement, and that he violates no law of the state of Georgia. As to count 44, the state's recommendation is five years to serve one year, commute to time served with a balance um, to be served on probation concurrent with count one. As to count 45, it would be five years to serve one year, commute to time served in confinement, I mean, excuse me, commute to time served, followed by four years on probation concurrent with counts one and 44. And count 46 would be 16 years to serve one year, commute to time served, followed by 15 years on probation, concurrent with count one, 44, and 45 um, would be the offer. Uh, Mr. Mender also is current. So, out of all those four charges, they're going to give them 16 years, right? And 15 of them will be on probation and only one will be in prison. And because he's already been in prison for a whole year, it's considered time served. And if he signs his plea bargain, he gets to go home today. Now, there is four charges. They're all ran concurrent. Uh, for those that don't know what concurrent means is that He's going to get sentenced for all four charges, but they're all going to be running at the same time parallel to each other. It's not like he does 16 for one, then he does 16 for another, then 16 for another, or, you know, stacked up, whatever. It does, uh, they're concurrent, so it's not going to work that way. They're going to run parallel, which means he's going to be doing the time for all of them consecutively at the same time. Uh, so that was that offer was 16 years. 15 years on probation, which means don't fuck up, don't break the law, don't jaywalk, don't get arrested, don't get caught with weed, uh, don't get caught driving on a suspended license, uh, because any of those can violate you and send you back to prison. Uh, and he gets to go home today. To tell you the truth, that's a hell of a fucking deal. Uh, that's a hell of a fucking deal. Uh, if you don't take that deal, what's going to happen is you're going to uh, take it to the box. And when you take it to the box, you got to beat four charges, which means that you got to prove that you're innocent in all four of those in order to be able to go home. Uh, you might be able to prove innocent in three, but one of them you might be guilty in. And if you get caught guilty in that one, the maximum was 50 years. Uh for all of them, but the maximum for the, for one of them was 20, and then it was like 10 and 15 and 15, right? Uh, so he's got to beat them all to be able to go home. If not, the worst case scenario, worst case scenario, the smallest one that he had was five years, I believe. Uh, but that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do, you know. Uh, let's hear what else the judge got to say on another indictment 21 SC 178250 and this case um, as a part of the as a part of the agreement would run concurrent with that case when, whenever he resolved that other case your honor is that before me or before another division it is in this division currently your honor and that's being handled by um, ADA Lauren Jansen with the state Does he have bond on that case ending in 250? I don't believe he has a bond on that case. No, he's he does not. No, he has a no bond status. But on this case, he would, he, it's potentially he could go home today. Correct. If he was given a bond, he would, okay. this case, he would not have served in jail time on this right. Okay. Bro, when you hear 50 years, right, and then they say you can go home today, that is very enticing. To anyone, bro, I don't give a fuck if you're the hardest gay member out there. I don't give a fuck if you're one of these stand tall dudes. I don't give a fuck if you're a rat. Uh, those, that time is enticing, bro, right? Uh, now, they haven't said what he has to do in return to get this time. I haven't heard that he has to cooperate. I haven't heard that he has to uh, rat out people. I haven't heard anything. So maybe maybe it's just a plea bargain, you know. Who knows? Hopefully they'll say it in the video. But as far as right now, they said that he gets to go home if he pleads guilty. Because he's pleading not guilty. But let's keep listening. 
and that offer will also conclude today, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Fagan, have you communicated that to your client um, in terms of, the, is that the, to correctly summarize the plea agreement or the potential plea offer, I should say? The only change was that he wasn't aware of the concurrent status for the second case. At this time, though, he still maintains a not guilty plea. Sure. Respectfully requests, um, rejects the offer, and we announce ready for trial. Okay, Mr. Mender, I'll tell you and I'll tell Mr. Beanie. Check this out. He just denied it. He said, hell no, nah, get that shit out of my face. I'm cool, I'll take it to the box. A lot of motherfuckers get life taking it to the box. A lot of people get washed up taking it to the box. That is a scary situation. I'll tell you like this, I've never taken anything to the box. You know what, have I? Oh yeah, I have. One charge. And it was it was a 186 point deuce, which was a gang, uh, being from a gang. Uh, they wanted to give us like 20 years for being part of a gang and we ended up getting what did we get I don't know like 2 years or some shit uh, we ended up getting like 2 years uh, my lawyer fought that shit and we ended up getting like 2 years uh, point of the story was the little homies did something and they ran to the they ran to the path that we were all kicking it at like the older homies at and we all ended up getting busted for whatever the little homie did outside, right? He was out there doing some, you know, some wicked shit. And because he ran back to the safe house and we were all there, uh, we got surrounded, helicopter, dragged out the whole works. And we were all from the same hood. Uh, and we ended up getting charged with the shit he was doing out there. Uh, plus, added with the, added with the uh, gang enhancements. And they wanted to do like 20 years or some shit. Uh... And he was a minor, bro. He was a fucking minor. So that cocksucker got to go home the same day while the rest of us got charged. A bunch of the homies ran and got away and like three or four of us got busted and I was one of them. So four of us were fighting the case together. Nobody ratted. Nobody fucking said nothing. We had a paid lawyer and uh, he made the shit go away. Uh, we did a little bit of time, but that was it. Uh, but it goes to tell you, let this be another uh, life lesson. We were just chilling, barbecuing, having a good old time. And the little homie was out there doing some desmadre. And because of the shit he did, all of a sudden we're going to jail. And we didn't even know what the fuck was going on. You know, but because we belonged to the same uh, neighborhood, we had to pay for that motherfucker. You know, but that's off topic. Maybe, maybe I'll tell that story a different day. Uh, but let's get back to listening to the judge. Mr. Stevens, the same thing, okay? At this point, you have the absolute right to plead not guilty, and that's what the law will presume, and the court will, um, of course, instruct that you have a presumption, and, and the presumptions and protections you enjoy as a criminal accused. You have to decide for yourselves what you want to do in this particular case, um, depending upon the results or, or, or the, the outcome of the trial. The only thing I would tell you, uh, Mr. Mender, is the most, and I'm sure that Ms. Fagan, she's a very fine attorney, seen her work. But trials, there, there's one thing about trials, it's uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. So you got to beat four counts. If you don't beat them, what will happen is under this A and C recidivist statute, you, I have to, under the law, sentence you to the maximum sentence. Check it out. This fucking uh, judge looks cool as shit. I shit you not. I see some old ass white men that are just angry as fuck. And they throw the book at you. You know, especially the women judges. This guy knows like he knows who YSL is. It looks like he has, you know, nieces and nephews that that are in that life. So he knows that maybe, you know, it ain't the right thing to do to lock these guys up away forever, you know. Uh, he just, he seems down to earth. He's explaining to the guy exactly how it's going to go down if you don't take this plea bargain. And most judges don't give a fuck, bro. They ain't going to explain shit to you. If you say, hey, I want to go to the box, you know what they're going to say? All right, cool. Set calendar day for so-and-so, so-and-so. I'll see you back on this date. Boom, done. 
they're done. They don't give a fuck, bro. They're not there to, you know, fix your life. They're there to do their job. But this motherfucker right here seems like he's cool as shit. But let's keep going. And then whatever I send you to, you serve to the to the door. That's not anything I have any discretion over. It's not anything because I don't like you or because of what you're being charged with or whatever. Those have nothing to do with anything. That's what the state of Georgia, the legislature has mandated that I sent you to. So one of the things a plea does is it, you know what you're getting. It caps your exposure. So, and what the state's telling you today is if you take the plea today, this is what you're going to get. And this is what I'll probably send you to. And you're done. That's what I'm going to say before I set the uh, whole, uh, the whole little homie story earlier. Uh, every single, most of the times that I've been busted, I've taken the plea. I've never wanted to take it to the box just that one time. There maybe just been one or two times. I've been busted a lot of times. I gotta think about it, right? But for the most part, most of the times I'll walk in there and most people will plead guilty, not guilty, without knowing what kind of sentencing they're gonna have. And they just leave it all in the judge's hand. That's a scary thing to do. Uh I'll tell you like this, to most most people that have been in this situation probably do the same. Maybe most don't. Uh, but I know that when I get busted and I go before the judge, I'll ask the judge, hey, if I plead guilty right now, I, I don't waste your time, I'm going to plead guilty. What am I going to get in return? What do you give me? And they tell you. They'll tell you, look, I'll sentence you to six months, 30 days, fucking work release, probation, you know, if you plead guilty right now. And you know what I do most of the time? Psh, I'm guilty. If it's a good deal, I'll take it. If it's a good deal, I'm with it. You know, it ain't no ratting, none of that bullshit. You're just copying a plea to get the fuck out of Dodge and be done with this shit. Uh, you know, because if you take it to the box, bro, you're wasting their time. You might not win. They're going to throw the book at you when they're done. And they don't like that, you know. Most of the times, I know I did the crime. I know they caught me red-handed, you know. Just let me know what you're going to give me before I plead guilty so... I'm aware of it. And if I think it's a good deal, fuck it, I'll go for it. You know? Uh, but that's how I do it. Most, I've seen people go up there and they'll ask them, guilty or not guilty? And the guy will be guilty. All right, uh, six years in prison. I'll be like, oh shit, what a fucking idiot. He should have asked first. You know? Because even if they offer you that time, if you even if you don't have a lawyer, you can extend it a couple of more court days to see if you get a better deal. You know? But a lot of people don't know about shit like that. But let's keep going. You gotta decide that for yourself. You can't be worried about any of these other folks that are attached, attached to this indictment. Because a plea is individual to that particular person for those particular reasons that he or she, he or she feels uh, is, is of best interest to them. Not anybody else. So, if you want a couple minutes out to talk with Ms. Fagan about that, Nobody will be the wiser, and uh, certainly, but if you don't wish to do so, that's fine too. You'll get the fairest trial that the law demands and expects you to get. You will get that. I, as a trial judge, will make sure that that occurs. But one of the things I cannot do is I can't force the state at the end of trial to pull this recidivist notice. If you get convicted, they can maintain it, and you'll serve every day of it. And Ms. Fagan can ask them to pull it, and they can say no. I can't make them do that. So, you got a lot to think about. That fool looks like he wants to, I don't want to say cry, but it looks like he wants to, like, show the world he's tough, he's holding, he's holding strong, but inside he's holding it in, like, fuck, man, I'm fighting for my life. And I feel for that young man, because it's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to do. A lot of people can stand here and say, Oh, I won't rat. I won't rat. I'm, I'm, I'm solid. I'm solid. I'll do this. Motherfuckers never even been busted for stealing a fucking candy bar, you know. Uh, but salute to this man for holding strong, even though he knows that he could go home. He's saying, "Fuck it," you know. I'm gonna stand tall. Is it the wise thing to do? I don't know. I'm not in those. I'm not in that situation. I thank God I'm not in that situation. Uh, but that's a scary thing. Uh, but once again, they haven't said what are the terms of this plea bargain. This there's another minute in, minute in this. Let's watch it to see if he's got to uh, snitch or not. 
So I'll give you a few more minutes to, 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 to ponder that because that is, when they file a recidivist notice, that is, that they, they have basically, in poker terms, they've called. Like, what do you want to do? So, I'll let you think about that. You can let me know. And if not, then we'll see you next week for trial. Um, Mr. Beatty, where are you? Here you are. That's the wrong lawyer to have. That's the wrong type of lawyer to have. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's let's keep going. However, uh, Mr. BB would ask the court if the court would hear and then negotiate the plea as to the indictment. I would. If that's the case, Judge, um, Mr. G.B. would then ask if he does not agree with Your Honor's sentence, would the court allow him to withdraw the plea and proceed to trial? Um, I need to think about that for just a second, okay? Understood. Just give me a minute, okay? But yes, that's more than fine. Thank you. Mr. Beebe, you got the same kind of, uh, same discussion I had with Mr. Um, with, with Mr. Mender applies to you, but let me just get back with you in just a second, okay? Mr. Stevens, where are you? Okay, um, Madam, are you still talking to me fine? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'm actually still exchanging text messages with the state. So okay, I'm going to take a couple of minutes out and let you all... All right, so, so far, you have one guy that said, I'm going to take it to trial. The other two guys are thinking about it. I think in the pre in the next video they both denied it as well and took it to the box. Uh, like I said, what are the terms of the plea bargain? Do they got a rat? Maybe they do so. Maybe that's why they don't want to take the plea bargain. Who knows? Somebody sent me a link. Uh, let me know if they these guys had to say something in order to get out today. Uh, but they're gonna stand tall. But like the judge told them, hey, you guys gotta worry about yourselves not nobody else but at the end of the day whatever these guys do it uh it'll affect young thug in the long run and that's probably why they didn't take the deals because they're probably looking out for their homeboy uh but other than that we're gonna kill this video we're late and call it a day uh stay strong don't snitch and if you're gonna be in the streets understand the consequences uh when you get busted don't point the finger at nobody and don't blame nobody but yourself uh or either that or don't join the gang at all. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to kill this video where I lay and call it a day. I'm Blue Devil. This has been the Hater World Production. And we out.